Hi there, Home Inspirationals. I'm Jenny. Uh, thank you for joining me today on my YouTube channel, Home Inspirations by Jenny. So today we're going to be creating a Thanksgiving centerpiece. And um, I have with me here today Faith Lynn McKenzie from Elegance for Less. And she is going to uh, collaborate, actually we are collaborating yes. together to put um, the centerpiece on one of her beautiful tablescapes. Yes, I'm excited to be able to see how this turned out. Guys, Jenny has just started her channel and I am so thrilled to be able to spend this time with her and to be able to watch her. I'm not going to do it with her, but we will create a tablescape that you can be a part of and you can see and get your dining room ready for Thanksgiving. We're excited about Thanksgiving and so we just wanted to share with you a little bit of what you can do to create a gorgeous table. So we will watch Jenny create a gorgeous centerpiece that is affordable that you can add to your table for this year's Thanksgiving. Yes, and you can go to your local grocery store to get those flowers. Um, we picked up uh, some beautiful lilies and some hydrangeas and some real fun chrysanthemums. Uh, you can go to either the Dollar Tree or you can go to Michael's Crafts, probably pick up some floral foam. This foam has been already pre-soaked. Um, when you soak your foam, you're going to want to make sure that the holes are facing up so that when it goes down, you'll see little air bubbles come up and that's how you know that your foam is soaked and it should be nice and heavy and good and wet. And you'll want to use cold water when you do that. Okay, so you can also add your floral preservative to the water ahead of time. Okay, so here are the things that you're going to need to create your Thanksgiving centerpiece. You're going to need a container. The container should be uh, waterproof and leak free. You don't want to put a container on your dining room table that's going to leak. You're going to need some floral foam. This is the foam that holds water. And when you um, use your foam, you're going to need a knife. So you're going to need a very large knife to cut your foam with. But I just use this big butcher knife. Um, you can use floral tape. You don't have to use it. I use it for transportation reasons. I like my arrangements to be nice and secure. You're going to need either a good pair of shears or if you are um, able to use a knife very carefully, this is, uh, can be very dangerous, but I use a knife. I'm a floral designer by trade. So if you're not used to using a knife, get yourself a good pair of cutters. You're going to need some floral picks, some wooden picks with a little wire attached on the end. So you'll want to have all of your products that you're going to use in your floral arrangement pre-chosen. I've gone ahead and got some uh, walnuts and some, sh you know, some shelled nuts from the grocery store. I have some pumpkins that I actually took from a fall wreath from last year. And these are really great because they go with my decor. And then of course your flowers. So you can see here, I have a nice assortment of flowers. There's some hydrangeas, some daisies, chrysanthemums, some lilies, some little button palms over here, and just your basic leather leaf. Now you can get these things at your local grocery store. So let's get inspired. It's Thanksgiving. Okay, Jenny, so I noticed that you've got the two end pieces flaring out. Yes, beautiful. And what is the purpose of this for those of us who's not familiar with putting together a floral arrangement? It looks fantastic already. I like that, the way it looked with some baby's breath, and that would be awesome. I love that. So, okay, so, um, well, this is called leather leaf fern, and the leather leaf, the reason that I put it in the way that I did was to create a length. And so we have equal parts on each side of the floral arrangement. So this creates a balance. Absolutely. So it gives us a balance. And then we have some height. 
So we put a little bit in and we actually created balance on the front and the back of the arrangement. This is three dimensional. So you have a front and a back and you have your sides and you have your height. Fantastic, because when you're at the dinner table, you don't want the back look shabby and the front is fantastic, right? <laughs> so right. you wanna just even all the way around. I love that. Thank you, exactly. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start with the hydrangeas. So the hydrangeas, um, the name hydrangea comes from the word hydration. <laughs> they, yes. yes, they like water very, very much. They're always very thirsty. So what I like to do is, so mix. now that I've spritzed my flowers, I'm gonna go ahead and put them into the floral foam. Now this is really important for you to know. Hydrangeas don't prefer floral foam. However, we do put them in the floral foam. So keeping them misted and keeping them deep into the foam where they can have a water resource is very important. Now you'll notice that I'm cutting my flower on an angle above this little nodule of green, uh, foliage. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to use this foliage in my arrangement. I also want to have a nice clean stem before I put it into the arrangement. So is this considered like a filler? It would be a filler. Okay, Correct. so you're going to use the leaves as fillers. I am going to Perfect. use the leaves. Yep. Okay. And so when I insert, I'm going to push and slowly move the flower up and down my finger like this so that it gets in nice and secure, okay? And when you put your flowers in, you want to kind of look at them. Believe it or not, there's a front and a back or a, or a fuller side, okay? So when I look at this, do I see a side that I prefer? Yes, yes I want to use the fuller side, mm -hmm. right? So now to have balance, I'm going to go ahead and put this one on the opposite side. So next I'm going to use these beautiful Asiatic lilies. These are beautiful orange tone. Now some people have a little bit of an allergic reaction to the sap that's in lilies and also you can get that from Alstroemeria if you're familiar with that flower. So if you have sensitive skin or you have a lot of allergies, I would recommend definitely using the cutters when you do cut your lily stems. And should you, you could wear gloves too, right? Those Absolutely. clear plastic gloves. What a great idea. Absolutely, wear gloves. Protect your manicure. <laughs> yes, so you'll see I've taken actually a flower from um, the top where all three of them were growing and I've made this into two and this into its very own little flower. Keeping the stem gives you length for your range. Love that. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing with another one. And you do want to use the buds. The buds are our friends. Buds make the arrangement very interesting and give it some dimension. And I think it'll be fantastic. The longer it stays, um, the arrangements, the buds will start opening. So that will be fantastic. That is exactly true. And one thing I want to let you know about is the pollen. A lot of people are afraid to, to uh, have lilies because the pollen gets all over their tablecloth or you know their furniture. So this stage that these uh, lilies are in right now is exactly when you are, should not be afraid to go ahead and pull the pollen out. It won't get on your fingers because it hasn't started to bloom. So you can pull that out before it starts to bloom. Now if your pollen is blooming, which you know where it's like that powdery kind of substance, mm -hmm. you don't want to touch it because you'll get it on your clothes, you'll get it all over everything. That's a great tip. Yeah, yeah. Great tip. And what you can do also with that is turn them upside down, hold them over the trash when you do it if you do have um, you know the, the blooming pollen and you'll just kind of hold it like this and pull them down and then the powdery substance will come down. Okay so we're going to move on to um, using some of the filler flowers. Now you'll notice I want to point this out. I use the larger flowers first and that's because they take up the most room. Second, I went with the second smaller size, larger, but it's not as big as the hydrangea. And now I'm moving on to the chrysanthemums. So when you create an arrangement, you're gonna start with your bigger flowers, so it takes up all the room, and work your way down to the smallest flowers. And just like we did before, we can, we can leave these in clusters, or we can take them apart. 
definitely want to clean out the foliage off of your stems so you have a nice clean stem. The arrangement will last longer because the water and the energy going to the flower will uh, not be absorbed by the foliage. It'll go right to the flower. This is looking fantastic. I love the way that this looks. Thank you, Faith Lynn. So we're gonna put our little pumpkins in now. Faith Lynn has gone ahead and put the wooden pick in them for me. So these are styrofoam and we just made a hole. Faith Lynn made a hole and put the wooden pick in. And now we can just easily insert. Now I like to leave my accent pieces for last because they're really kind of the star of the arrangement. Fantastic. And our last one we'll do on this side. Here's what we've got so far. Can you even snag that in? Here now, I know you spoke of a pedestal. Yes. So do you still want to do a pedestal for this? I would love I can it. remove this. Thank you. I would love to put it on this pedestal. And you can use anything you have that will hold the container. This is a big cake plate that I'm using, and my container fits right on there. And so now we've got it lifted up off the, the table. And what you want to do is just double check your mechanics. You want to look down at the bottom, make sure that you don't have any holes or any place where you might want to put something. I think I'm going to add a little flower on this side. I am totally loving that. You could fill in the bottom with some fern too if you wanted to, right? Absolutely. Just to hide the glass. <laughs> exactly. And you were reading my mind because I was already moving right into that. Absolutely. As much fern as you like. Um, you can go out into your garden and pick some grasses. This would be fantastic with some grasses. Yeah. Um, any kind of wheat. Um, any fall leaves you can put in. So yeah. let me ask you, how long will this last? Well, if you keep it watered, it should last two weeks. Do you put the water as far as spritzing the top or what do you do? Or pour it into the sensor to get the container? Both. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Yep. Great. The hydrangeas would love a spritz and the rest of the flowers would love to drink it from the foam in, inside the container. Okay. Correct. So it will last two weeks. It, it should, if you take care of it, it'll last two weeks. Now, you'll probably find some of the flowers will fade, mm -hmm. um, and that's okay. You can take those out. Perfect, though. Yeah, it's, You did a fantastic, quick, easy DIY here. Yes, yes, ma'am. I love it. And you could even, oops, you could even add some fall leaves if you wanted to, um, you know, depending on your decor, but... <clears throat> These are silk, so I have no problem. So awesome. You can mix the real and the silk together. Absolutely. Nice. Yes, ma'am. I love that. So there we go. Because I normally work with the silk flowers. I'm not necessarily with the live flowers. So I do like that you can mix both of them. If you need to and you don't have a stem or you don't want to take the time, you can always just tuck you can always just tuck one in there. Just like Quick that. and easy. How gorgeous is that, guys? Okay, so that's it for this part of the video. I hope that you guys will watch, give a thumbs up, and decide to become a subscriber. Jenny is fantastic, and I know she's going to be sharing with you guys lots and lots of fantastic arrangements and different things that you can do to make your home livable and gorgeous. So guys, I hope that you love that for Thanksgiving. What do you think, Jenny? I'm very pleased. I think I'm inspired and I'm ready to cook a turkey. <laughs> I love that. I think you have inspired me as well. How easy is that? I love it. All right, guys, make
make sure you stay tuned for the second part of this video when we actually create the tablescape and add this fantastic, I know I use that word fantastic all the time. I know, but this beautiful, gorgeous centerpiece. All right, guys, thank you so much. And Jenny, will you close this out? Yes, thank you so much for watching. Home Inspirations by Jenny. I look forward to seeing you. All right, guys.